This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. A certain man came walking onto a used car lot one afternoon, went over to the salesman and said, you're the one who sold me that car last week, remember? The salesman said, yes, I do. The man said, would you mind telling me again all the wonderful things you said about it a week ago? He said, I'm getting discouraged. This is precisely what you need to do when you become discouraged in some way with your religion, with your faith. Return to the source of it. Get back to God. Return to the practices of prayer, worship, and communion. Develop a vital sense of daily companionship with God in everything you do, regardless of your activities. When you go to the doctor and get some kinds of inoculations, he'll tell you that from time to time you'll need booster shots to maintain the efficacy of the original ones. And you could think of prayer and worship in much the same ways as daily booster shots for your faith. They keep spiritual consciousness in your bloodstream, so to speak. There's an invigorating vitality and an energizing encouragement in consciously keeping close to your Creator, practicing the presence of God, certain of God's reality, God's existence, God's nearness to you, God's care, compassion, and concern for you, and returning that in love for God and love for others. What was it that made Newt Rockney of Notre Dame a great football coach? It wasn't just his technical knowledge of the game and his sage gridiron strategy. It was more than these. Newspaper sports reporters said that the cornerstone of Rockney's success was his ability to impart enthusiasm to his teams. He didn't just train his players during the week, then abandon them at game time, he continually instructed them and encouraged them to keep their morale high. Your God is a great God for the very same reason. Not only because of God's mighty power, wisdom, and glory, but because God stays with you abidingly, even in your most difficult uphill struggles. Jesus did not say he would cause your problems to vanish but he will go through those difficult waters of adversity with you. God's spirit is within your mind. Give heed and hearken to it. God will instruct and encourage you for the daily doing of God's will. It is written, the spirit in man is the candle of God or the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the philosopher, was a believer in self-reliance. But there is something far more important than self-reliance, and that is learning God-reliance. Rely not only upon yourself, but upon the Spirit of God within yourself to lead and guide and instruct you. God is not just thinking of you when you're thinking of Him, but ever and always, God is your Father and your friend. And that word Father implies relationship, that you can know God, you can have interaction, transaction with God. You can share your inner life on a daily basis with the very one who created this universe of universes, the very far-flung galaxies and stars and planets were conceived ultimately in the mind of the God who is the source and center of all things and who is your father, your friend, who loves you with a love which this very moment surrounds you and is within you can sustain you, can strengthen you, can empower you for living your life as you were born to live, as you were created to live, and as somewhere deep inside yourself you really long to live as a son or daughter of this everlasting God. Jesus on one occasion said, let me show you what the man who comes to me, hears what I have to say, and puts it into practice is really like. He's like a man building a house who dug down to rock bottom and made the foundation of his house on the rock. Then when the flood came and the flood water swept down upon that house, it could not shift it because it was properly built. But the man who hears me and does nothing about it is like a man who builds his house with a foundation upon soft earth. When the flood water sweeps down upon it, it collapses and the whole house crashes down in ruins. So here the question, where have you chosen to build upon rock or on sand. The decision is yours. The results, however, belong to history because the consequences of the decision to do the will of God are far-reaching, not just in the moment, in the instant, but through every year of your life, decade by decade, and through all the starry years lying ahead of you in all eternity. It is the most significant 
decision you will ever face and the most significant decision you will ever make. When a gambler stands at a gaming table and plays the dice or roulette, he makes a choice, he calls a number, but his or her choice makes no difference whatever in what happens, in which number actually does come up on the dice or on the wheel. A gambling choice does not affect the outcome. But a spiritual choice, a religious decision, does affect the outcome of your entire life, of all of your existence. The decision to do the living will of the living God is the greatest choice you will ever encounter. And it is simple as praying, God, it is my will that yours be done, or thy will be done, in the more traditional language of it. But giving yourself, surrendering yourself, heart, soul, body, mind, spirit, all you are, all you hope to be, all you ever will become, to the embrace of the loving will of God. The famed psychologist William James wrote in his book, Varieties of Religious Experience, we and God must have business one with the other, and in opening our hearts to him, our highest destiny is fulfilled. Jacob Rees, the social reformer, who gave his life to combating the evils of the slums of lower New York's east side, said, we fight to win, for we fight at the side of God on behalf of God's children. There it is in a nutshell. The fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. The concept that all this planet is one vast family of God. Over the French College of Physicians may be seen these words cut in stone. I dressed his wounds, God healed him. And many a military hospital tent bears these words, man treats, but God heals. The ultimate source, the ultimate power, the ultimate energy in this universe is the power of God's love, and God rules this entire cosmos by that love. That living love which you can experience in your life, which you can know, which can sustain and strengthen and empower you, even in your darkest moments, in your most trying and difficult hours. That love, clean and pure and real and resonant, can fill your heart, your mind, your soul, and your life with peace like a river and joy like a running stream. If only you will have the faith to claim it, to believe it. And that is acting as if, living as if this were true. Assuming this truth, that you're loved by God, that you're a son or daughter of God, and then acting upon that assumption, living each moment of your life as if that were the case. And you will discover it's real, it's true. And God's spirit is abiding and genuine. God, the creator of the universe, is a real personality, perfect in righteousness, brimming with love. Most important, God is the spirit father of each of us, which means that everyone can realize an intimate spiritual connection to this very source and center of all reality. We can be friends with God in an ongoing hour-by-hour, day-by-day relationship. The God of heaven who holds the galaxies in his grasp and who keeps in spiritual touch with all of his vast creation is a personality who knows us, who loves us, and whom we can know and love in return. God's word of truth stands fast eternally. God's beauty is woven into the majestic cosmos. God's goodness nourishes every hungry soul who thirsts for divine righteousness. The greatness of the infinite God should not overwhelm you because you can relate to God personally as a father. Know God. And the more you trust that God is your father and that we're all his children, the more we'll be empowered to do his will, to get to know God better and to reveal God to our brothers and sisters so that we can live actualizing the kind of filial feeling that we ought to have every day for every other person we encounter. But Paul Holdcraft once said, God will not look you over for medals, degrees, and diplomas at the end of your life but for scars. Emmanuel Winters wrote in Harper's Magazine, once a great idol-worshiping king told a rabbi that unless this rabbi could produce his god in court, the rabbi's head would roll in the streets. The rabbi said, certainly, O great king, but first come out in the sunshine. I want to show you something. The king humored the old fellow. Take a look at the sun, O great king, said the rabbi. The king tried to look at the sun. It was a hot sun. It was over in Asia. 
I can't look at the sun, declared the mighty king. It hurts my eyes. Well then, said the rabbi, how in heaven's name do you expect to see God face to face if you can't even look at the sun, which is only one of the many, many things which God has made? And so the next day that rabbi was made a noble. Consider the mighty greatness of God your father. All that God has created, and yet the crowning achievement was your free will existence, your evolutionary ascent, your ability in the context of your decision-making to assert your will on behalf of finding and knowing God, doing God's will, actualizing the great potential, which is that will of God. Professor E.R. Dodds of Cambridge University in a recent book, reminds his readers that Aristotle conceived of God as the impassive one who was loved by his creatures but who did not love them in return. But what a different vision in the teachings of Jesus who taught that God loves his children actively, doesn't just love his children in return after they have loved him or because they love him, but God loves us even before we think to love him. You're born into the love of God, which is the final source, the ultimate source of all it is, and that love of God, which if you feelingly experience it by faith right now, can begin its transformative work even as the sunlight on the soil in which a seed is nourished begins to give birth to that fertile life, so your soul can begin to grow in ways joyous to know and delightful to experience. It all begins in the simple faith to claim that love of God, to know that you're loved with an infinite love by your heavenly Father. And all things, all things from that moment on will become for you as new. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.